you want me to talk about? What did we say? All right. Hey, hey, we're live, baby. You ready to go? <laughs> Uh, and I, I always start the show it with, and we're live, and we are officially live, and uh, I, I'm super excited. Tina, thanks so much for uh, joining me this afternoon. I know you are one busy lady, um, so I truly appreciate you being here. I'm excited to be here. So, um, yeah, this is fun. Yep. So I want to spend, you know, maybe the next like, um, you know, 30 minutes or so just really dropping some value for our audience. And, and I love to bring people on who are top producers um, and who are really at the top of the real estate game um, to talk about, you know, areas of their business that they're really just crushing it in. And, and obviously you are definitely, uh, uh, definitely crushing it. Uh, in your business, you're an eighty million dollar producer. Um, you know, you've you've built a a well oiled machine over there. What market are you guys servicing, Tina? So we're in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham. Okay, and that's yeah. a that's a very competitive marketplace. I, I've got some some other friends who are in that marketplace. It's a great place to live. Um, so I'm sure that you know you you you've got to have your stuff together when you're competing in a market like that. Um, how long have you been in real estate now? So I started in 2001. So, okay. Yeah, 18, 19 years now. So, talk a little bit about like, um, what did you do before real estate? Uh, I was 23. So, I was a college student. Okay. Wow, man. So, you got, I mean, you got in right out of college. Yeah, I, I was in college and I broke my parents' heart. I left because my uh, husband and I, a fiance and I at the time, uh, we bought our first place. We flipped it. We made money. We thought that was really exciting. And the real estate agent that um, we worked with recruited me into real estate. She kept calling me and saying, "You're going to be great at this. You should just do this. Let me pay for. We'll pay for your license." And I was like, "No, no, no." Um, but my family had a real estate background. We would flip homes, and so I always had like a, you know, I, I knew the business a little bit. Um, but it was her. Thank you, Jill Bomarito, wherever you are, if you're watching this. Um, <laughs> She was really the one that pushed me into the business and then it was game over. I dropped out of college because I'm like, well, you know, I sold a bunch of homes my first year. It was, I knew it was my calling. That's awesome, man. So like um, a lot of people, when they get into the business, they struggle. You know, there's an 85% failure rate, I think in the first year. And then, and then of those 15% that survive, there's an 85% failure rate in the second year. So how did you make it work at such a young age? You know, it's funny because I come from a, um, so both of my parents are immigrants. One came from Italy, one came from Greece. And I watched my father um, and mother through the years. They would open a business, it would fail, they'd open another business. So I was, to me, it wasn't weird to start something entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't afraid to put myself out there. So I sought out information. Um, I remember I found this for sale by owner packet online. And it was, you know, how to help for sale by owners sell their homes themselves. And so the goal was to, you know, give them a lot of information, uh, be in front of them all the time. And, you know, hopefully they would list with you one day. So as a new brand new agent, my first two listings, uh, two, three months into the business were for sale by owners. I mean, I just, and to this day, um, I know where they are. They still talk to me and they still love me. And uh, cause you never forget your first. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I just put myself out there and I brought another agent, Jill, uh, who recruited me, you know, to come with me on that listing appointment. And so I was never afraid to just, you know, put myself out there. And that's just how I built it. I built it with my friends, my family. Um, luckily, at that age range, you know, people were starting to get married and buy homes. So it was a perfect storm for me to enter the business and then supplement with not being afraid to get in front of for sale by owners at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, like, you had you had that foundation, you, you know, where you had kind of grown up seeing your, your parents open businesses and, and not be afraid to fail. Basically either you win or you learn. Right. And, and you were, that was probably instilled at you at a very young age. And then, you know, obviously they set that example. So yeah. it was not really a, a big deal for you to, you know, to jump right in and, and then have some success obviously. And you weren't going to give up because, you know, you'd seen that there was, you know, and that's one of the great things about, you know, see, having parents that are not afraid to go out and, and, and start a business and fail uh, because you're seeing that firsthand that the repercussions are, are, are not really there or they are a myth. Uh, failure is a myth. Um, you, you only actually fail if you quit. So right. th you had that instilled at you at, a, at an early age. So 23 years old, you're jumping into real estate. You're having some success early. Tell me, like, 
when, when did you because you have there's this there's this shift right there's a there's a shift between you know the moment you know that you're a, a single agent and then the, and then the moment you know that I want to build a team and then the moment you know that you transition into an actual business owner right where you're leveraging other people to do all of the work within the team so, so walk me through that real quick. walk me through the 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 the, the young the young 23 year old girl from the, the time that you know you started into the business to the time that you had that shift into, oh my gosh, I need to build a team because I've got more business than I can handle. Well, it, you know, building the team concept um, was, you know, way later in my career. So, you know, the first few years, you're just trying to figure out how, how to do a transaction, you know, how to talk to sellers. I leaned on almost every agent in my office. I can name them all to this day, um, love them all. I would literally, you know, call them at all hours of the night. Like I've got to put this offer and there's other offers. What do I do? I remember Pete Schuler meeting me at 10 o'clock at night to run to, to run numbers for me and help me. So I really leaned on all of my coworkers and they were just amazing. So so I learned through them at the time and um, did just a, a good business. I made about one hundred twenty five thousand max. And then I was happy there. I was making one hundred twenty five. Kevin was making hundred. We were making two hundred fifty thousand dollars being in our mid to late 20s. That's a lot of money, a quarter yeah, million. Great living. <laughs> great life at 23, let me tell you. And we blew it all too. But anyway, <laughs> um, as we were growing and learning, for me, the big change came when 2006 hit in Michigan. And so 2005, 2006, I saw the, the change and, and I was doing more short sales. I was learning how to do short sales because they were prevalent in our market. I saw homes that were worth 300,000 were down to 175. It was really a tough time. So I went from $125,000 a year to $40,000 a year in income. And Kevin wow. and I, big, beautiful house. Our taxes were nine grand a year, um, a year for taxes at the time. Um, and my income was always the fun money. And yeah. so it wasn't very fun to go from 125 to 40 grand. Yes. And so I, I would say to myself at night, I'd be praying, going, God, am I, is this the business for me? Because to make 40 grand and have to deal with short sales, I was just depressed. Um, everybody in my office, we were all losing business. And I remember saying, I'm going to go into interior design. I'm just, I love interior design. I put an ad in the yellow pages at the time, all in a day design. I got my first two customers. They paid me 50 bucks an hour and I was going that route. Um, and I was cleaning out my desk. And I opened up my file cabinet drawer and there was a, a piece of paper that I pulled out and it said, earn a million dollars selling real estate with the Mike Ferry organization. And I remember that I had filed, filed that paper probably six years ago because I'd always wanted to have a coach, but I couldn't afford $2,000 as a new agent. And I had forgotten about it six years into my career. So I threw it away because I'm like, I can't afford that. I make no money. Um, and then two days later, I got an email. I was back cleaning out my office. I was le leaving business and it said, join us at the action workshop in Plymouth, learn for free how to make a million dollars a year. And I'm like, you know what? This is a sign. I got to go check this out. Yeah. This is God telling me, go check this out. So I grabbed three or four people in my office. I'm like, we're all going. I grabbed my broker at the time. I'm like, you're going, let's just go. Maybe we learn something. So we all went and we sat down and at that time there were, probably a hundred people there and two people stood up in front of the room. It was, I didn't know them at the time. It was Jeff Glover and it was Michelle Sayward yeah. and they were Mike Ferry agents. And Jeff stood up and he said, I used to sell um, furniture. He said, and now, and he was probably 20 at the time. He said, now I make $250,000 a year selling real estate. I was like, holy moly. And that's in today's market. Market's yeah. crashing. He's making 250. Michelle stands up and she says, I make $200,000 with a little squeaky voice. And I'm looking at these two going, these two are not better than me. I have a company, you know, and I love you guys, but I was like, I, they're not better than me. I, you know, I'm a salesperson too. So yeah. I literally in my mind was going, how am I going to convince my husband to spend a thousand dollars a month when I'm leaving the business? He's going to kill me. So yeah. I got up in the bathroom and all of a sudden I see Bellino by who is, in our market, making a million dollars a year, she would run circles around us. And we would all talk about her in the office. Like, how does she get all the good listings? How does she get her homes to sell so quickly? How does she do it? And she was kind of shocked that she saw me because we were all here from my office. And I said, my God, Belene, why are you at a training event when you're awesome? And she said, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. It was kind of like a Jedi moment. And I'm going, what does that mean? You know, and then I'm thinking, 
the bathroom and I ran into her again and she's just like, I've been coaching with this company for 10 years and they taught me how to make a million dollars selling real estate. So I was sold. I, I told all of my peers that were there with me, I'm like, I'm doing this. They were like, what are you crazy? Like, that's a lot of money. I said, I'm doing it. So I go home. Um, on the way home, I thought to myself, I'm going to tell Kevin that I'm going to, I'm going back to school. I'm going back to college. He won't fight me on that. Yeah. And so I said, honey, I'm going back to college. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a degree. And he said, a degree? Well, good for you. What do you, what do you think you're going to get it in? And I said, in real estate. And he said, what do you mean? You, you already sell real estate. I said, no, I'm going to get it in real estate. And there's this coaching company and it's going to teach me that. And I, he thought I was nuts. He said, honey, oh, it's, an yeah. it's an MLM. They're, they're just trying to take your money. Um, so after two days of him being pissed, he was like, fine, if you're going to do it, do it. And um, I signed up and the rest is history. But the reality is I, you know, they gave me the tools, but for two months I lied to my coach. I told my coach at the time that I was making the calls. I was not making the calls. I was oh. trying to pick up the phone. I really was. And, and I remember he, he says to me, you either suck really bad or you're lying because when we're role playing, you're pretty good. And I said, well, I actually have been lying. I haven't picked up the phone. So he gave me that challenge to stop lying and pick up the phone. And the next day I did, and I called a for sale by owner, and I read the script, and the guy answered the question. And then I read the second line, and he answered the question, and I hung up on him. And I thought, holy shit, this works. The scripts work. You know, I didn't believe it. And so then you get better, and you get better, and, and you fail, and you learn, and and from I replaced my income in one year. I went from forty grand to over a hundred thousand in one year. Nice. Who had to go get listings? I knew what to say to a seller. And and by the time the year went by, I had forgotten what I said on listing appointments before I had a script. And yeah. so it just treat it, you know you, it turns you into a professional. I, I know there's a stigma with scripts, but when you internalize them, you're not worried about what to say, and yeah. and you're yourself when they're internalized. So. From there, in 2008, we saw kind of the light and Kevin hated his job. He worked in, uh, he was a uh, supervisor at a car dealership and a special finance manager. He was never home and he hated his job. And so we made a plan for him to get his license. Um, we, would, we would grow our business for six, eight more months and then we would move to North Carolina and we would rebuild our life there because we hated the snow in Michigan. Yeah. And so... With my coach, uh, Kathy Anderson, at the time, we made a plan for within one year, we were going to go to uh, Cary, North Carolina. That's where we moved all of our customers uh, that were relocating. And we did it and we executed. So September 2009, I landed in a brand new market. I didn't know a soul. Their market was crashing then. So our market crashed in 2006. Their market just started to crash in 2009. So when oh, we perfect. ended up, what was that? Perfect timing. Perfect timing, which I was like, I didn't know that. But, you know, so I, I started with a Remax there and I stayed with them for eight years. But I remember talking to the broker and I said, I want the biggest corner office because I'm going to light the world on fire. I mean, I had that much enthusiasm. And so we didn't list a home for six months. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, it was it was hard. Um, but the, the biggest mindset for me was I would talk to people with southern accents and it threw me off. You know, they and I thought that they would say, where are you from? And it was it was a complete mindset shift. So finally, I think I sold one so short sale in my first six months here. And then the second six month period, we sold about 30 homes because I had realized that with my coach, I needed to get over myself. A house is a house is a house. You're still a great agent. You're just in a different market. So figure out where you are and and just go do it. So. From there, we, we made 200,000 our first year, then 300, then 400, then you know up to over a million, which was our goal. Yeah. As we were growing, I think in 2015, it was myself, an assistant, and Kevin. And I was doing about 130 transactions myself personally, which was a nightmare. Yeah. And um, I remember my coach saying, you need a buyer's agent. You need to you know give that business away. And I did not want to give that business up. I'm like, why would I give somebody 50% of my buyers? Um, and so, you know, I, I followed it blindly and I did. And, and what was nice is I saw that I had leveraged that. I, I gave up the buyers, but I got more listings and the business just organically grew. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until I think 2016 where in my mind, 
I was watching these really big mega teams at KW and, and I'm going, God, these guys have it all. I mean, Jeff Glover's probably out there golfing every day and, and doing nothing. And he's got these big teams and, and that's what I want to do. I want to, I want more time. And what I didn't realize um, is that I actually had a great life having, you know, three people on my team, two admin, I was running lean and mean. I mean, we were selling a lot of homes, you know, we were, you know, grossing close to 2 million bucks, you know, and keeping most of it, which is great. Um, and I was golfing three days a week and I didn't have to come into the office every day. And I went on my appointments and I did my business, but I actually thought I was overworking. I was working too much. Yeah. Um, what I didn't know as I started growing the team is that now I'm not only working for myself with my own listings, but I'm working to build other people's lives. Yes. And then I need to go find a unicorn like myself to replace myself when all the unicorns are working out in the field, growing their own teams. And so it was tough to, to, I almost went in a little depression when I moved from Remax to KW. I'm like, this, this can't be it. Like I don't see an end in sight. I have to go sell five, six, 700 homes to make the kind of money I was netting as a smaller team. Yeah. But what happens is my overhead and expenses start to grow, mm -hmm. which doesn't feel good at night when you go to sleep, knowing that I've got $60,000 worth of expenses. When I wake up tomorrow morning, first of the month, and so if I don't sell 15, 20 homes, I don't break even. Yeah. And so that's kind of what led me to about six months ago. That that was my life and 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 growth pattern. Um, so it's it's changed, you know, it's constantly changed and grown. Yeah. So what a great story, man. And and all of us, I think, who are who are at the team leader level, um, we we all go through this business evolution, right? And um, it's it's always the stories are a little bit different, but they're always the same. And and you know, so when we were leaving um, KW because we left KW as well, um, we were opening. We were actually in the middle of opening uh, an, a market center, and we were going to be a, an owner in that market center. And then this this opportunity at EXP was thrown in our laps, and you know, obviously we evaluated that. But the, to your point, though, the reason why I made the decision to come to EXP was also because of um, I wanted to have success ultimately through my team. But what you're saying is a great segue actually into um, our topic today, which is the ISA, um, the scaling a team of ISAs. And, and because what I wanna to talk to you exclusively about though, um, for the next couple of minutes is the transition that you went through, um, both I guess I guess mentally and then um, and then financially, when you decided to, because you were used to depending on yourself, and the great thing about depending on yourself is you always know you're going to show up, and you always know you can manage yourself, right, to make the calls. But what was it like for you to actually hand that over, that duty, which was the actual gasoline that powered the engine of your business? Um, what was it like to hand that over to somebody else? Um, you know, it was tough. We've gone through a lot of ISAs. So I got, I got to be honest, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because at different levels, you know, my brother always says to me, why do you always work so hard and want more and more and more? And it's not that I want more. I just want different levels of fulfillment. And so I'm just a doer and, and I want diff I never want to, um, float in complacency. I'm just not that way. And, and that was from Mike Ferry. You know, it's think big, think big and, and have big goals and big dreams. And so it's not that we're just money hungry people that want to, it, that's not even it. It's just different levels of fulfillment in your life. And so for me growing a team, I thought, my God, after 16, 17 years of the grind, now maybe I can have more time for my family and myself. And then I can teach people what I know and then I'll get the luxury of time back. And that's what I really thought a team was. Um, what I didn't realize is that I needed to learn how to become an awesome manager. I needed to still be the, the listing agent. I needed to be you know, a team leader and train people. And, and so you go through that and you go, well, gosh, now I have no time at all. And, um, and so, yeah, so you go through these different levels of fulfillment and then you start going, I don't see an end in sight. I don't see how this ever goes away. Um, even if I replace myself and take a huge cut in the business and make 20, 30%, that's fine. It wasn't even about the money, but I still don't ever see myself running a team without my presence there. And it just didn't seem like it would be fulfilling enough to do. 
So, um, so yeah, so I think, did I answer the question? Yeah, you did. I guess the, to piggyback on that answer though, is, is, is if you, if someone's watching this right now and either they have a team of ISAs or oh, yeah. they're, they're thinking would... about hiring an ISA, right. um, what, what advice would you give them? So, so going back on that, I knew I didn't answer the question. So I, I forgot the ISA role. So as I was doing this, I thought I need more time in the day. So uh, those two hours that I'm grinding every morning, two to three hours, you know, I'm getting into the office at 730. I'm role playing. I'm on the phones at 8, 830. Um, I'm on the phones till 11. I needed that time back because I needed to dedicate it to the team and to their growth and to their training to learn how to, um, to teach them how to go fish. And so if they were going to be really successful agents, they need to learn that piece of it. We've, we've got to embrace repetitious boredom every single day when we have to uh, grow our business um, because I want them to create duplicatable businesses. And so I thought, let me train some ISAs because it seems like all of us, all of us out there, these ISA teams came about, what, five years ago? People were like, oh, we'll grow these ISA teams. And yeah. so I follow along because I listen to podcasts every day. I, I, I know all the players and I want to learn and grow from these guys. So I thought, okay, we're building an ISA team. I recruited five agents on my team. I trained them to be ISAs um, first because I thought if they build that foundation and I pay them a monthly income to be an ISA, I'm going to give them um, a base. And then when they transition out of being an ISA, they can go into being a buyer's agent and they're going to have that, that structure. Mm -hmm. um, but what I realized, it was really, really expensive, number one, to hire brand new agents and train them to be ISAs because you're not going to get an agent that's been, uh, you know, in the business for 10 years and, and recruit them to your team and make them an ISA. That's not happening. Yeah. So you have to start with a fresh new person. And to give them all that knowledge, you've got three, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120 days of training. By that time, they're like, okay, I'm ready. And then they want to transition into a buyer agent and you're now losing your ISA. So that we, we squash that. Um, then we went into hiring two ISAs that were just going to be ISAs. But I realized the burnout rate for these people is really, really high. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't bringing in enough for us to, to make it happen. So we were burning through. Now I have one ISA for me personally that I've trained and, um, and he's helping us just make expired FISBO calls every morning. And so I look at those listings and I go, okay, I'll go on these. And then for the ones that I don't want or they're too far, I'll give them to my team and have them conquer it. So that seems to be working, but it took me two years to really find one person that I love. And that's great. Um, so I don't know. I don't know that I, I um, would grow a 10 person ISA team because I think it's a lot of overhead, but I think to have one or two on a team is, is very valuable if you can find somebody good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I hear, what I heard you say, and, and this is where anybody who's watching or listening, um, take notes is that you first tried to you. and by the way, we made these same mistakes. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like a great idea to bring somebody in and train them as an ISA and then transition them out of the business. It's just, it, it, it sucks all your time, energy and resources because you're constantly training new people on the phones. And right. And, and what you didn't mention is what about the ones that don't even work out as agents, right? Then you're not even, you're not even getting anything from all the training you did in front as, as, as an ISA because they should have developed the proper habits to prospect as an ISA. But when they transition over to an agent, it doesn't work out, right? And so you've wasted all that time, energy and resources. So you're saying that that's a bad idea. And by the way, I totally agree with that. Um, I, I don't think it's a good idea while it sounds good. And yeah. maybe there are agents who are, who have made that work. I don't. I don't think it's the best way to do it. I like what you did. Is you said, "All right, I'm going to start with one. Right, I'm going to start with one guy. I'm going to be very selective. He's going to work exclusively for me. I'm going to teach him exactly what I did. Right. I'm going to spend time with this individual training. Yeah. Because I did. By the way, Tina, I didn't do that either. I didn't spend the appropriate amount of time with my people, and then I would get upset that you know they weren't performing. But you did it the right way. After after trial and error, you trained the guy that you liked, and now he is your exclusive ISA. And then any over any overflow, then you can just repurpose that to your team, right? 
Exactly. Like he knows the scripts we use. It's all very, and, and, you know, his calls are recorded now. So the team can learn off of him because he's really good at what he does. Um, but, you know, to just get an ISA off the street, I, I know a lot of agents in our area say, oh, I'm going to hire an ISA. And it's like, they better be really good or they're just not going to be as effective. Um, mm -hmm. You'll just do it yourself because then you're wasting money. If they're not going to be making a thousand, twelve hundred calls a day and and they're not bringing in two to three, four appointments a day because we're going to cancel half of them. You know, not every appointment works. Right. Um, just not worth what the pay is. Um, so I think, you know, there's just no magic answer. It's it's either you build this big mega team and by sheer volume, you're going to net more money. Um, but in in return, you've got a ton of overhead um, or you keep it small, um, which I think I'm more I'm more. When, I, when I've done both, I'm more prone to having a smaller team, uh, being highly, running it lean and mean, yep. and just being that, you know, just be the rainmaker on the team. You know, I, I, if I could, not that I would trade my old life, but if I look back, I actually had a really easy life to make the kind of money that I made doing 100 transactions a year with two or three people on my team. I didn't have to go buy a ton of Zillow leads. I didn't have to worry about where business came from because it fed us all and we were all very fat and happy, you know? Yeah. Um, but you do start to think, how do I exit out of this rat race? You know, how do I ever have more time where my phone is not attached to my hip? Yeah. Um, first time ever last year in 18 years in the business, I actually got to go to Hawaii and I left my cell phone at, at home. I left it with my ops manager, which was literally like leaving your crack at, you know, at home and you're an addict. And for the first, I literally cried when I was in Hawaii. I'm like, I've never felt like freedom. This is freedom. This is how people feel when they get out of jail. And, and when I came back, um, even my ops manager goes, oh, my God, I told people, like, it's annoying to be you. Like, you're, you know, constantly, you just get bombarded with messages. I mean, I've got them here. They're just, my phone's been going off the whole time. How do you ever leave that day to day where you can just find peace? You know, yeah. somebody goes home from a nine to five, their phone doesn't ring. Um, our phone constantly rings, thank you. You, right? And and so, thank you. It's like it's crazy. Um, yeah. And it's eleven o'clock at night. People are texting you, and and if you don't give them that level of service, you're not in business. So yeah. you know that part of the business, as you grow and more people want your advice, um, it gets so draining on the soul that you you lose yourself in the business. And so I. I decided after I came back in August of last year from, from Kauai, I'm like, I, I want my life back. There's got to be a way. And what was so funny, Mike, is I, I, I plan every, at the end of the year, I always make my affirmations and I, I set my goals. Um, I allow the universe to bring me what I want based on just doing that with Mike Ferry, you know, just ask for it. And so I said to myself, I'm going to figure out a way to replace my income in passive income. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I have no clue. But I wrote it down and I said, here's the number I need to be able to walk away from the business. And when I get that number, then I know it's time. And what was funny is um, a friend of mine called me um, who happens to be Michelle Sayward, who this is a full circle moment for me. Um, Michelle and I became friends through Mike Ferry. She was the first one I saw that stood up in front of the room and said, I make all this money coaching. We remained friends. And she moved um, from an independent brokerage to EXP. And Michelle sells, she's a, she's a monster. She sells 170 homes herself. I mean, talk about a machine. Um, and she called me and she said, I'm moving my business. And I said, what do you mean you're moving your business? I thought you were coming to KW. And she goes, no, I think I'm going to do this other model. And I said, uh, what is it? And she said, EXP. And I went, oh, God, like I heard about that stupid internet company two years ago. You know, just just I didn't. I didn't know much about it, but I was very closed off to it. Um, and so anyway, when, when she told me a, a little bit more about it and I watched the video, that's where I decided this is going to benefit my team. And it, it gave me the solutions that I was looking for moving forward. So yeah. Um, Has she kind of been a mentor to you? Not really a mentor. We're friends. I mean, we traveled to all the Mike Ferry events together. Um, so no, not really mentor. I mean, she's a peer and, um, you know, her and I had very bit different businesses. She stayed really small and ran her business lean and mean, where I um, I wanted to expand my business, hoping to gain leverage and hoping to yeah. gain freedom. And she was more afraid of taking on the debt 
um, that it would take to grow the business. So um, her and I were in completely different mindsets with with okay. our trajectory in the business. And I, I probably said that wrong. I mean, like, I, I can give you some examples of people I think who were kind of mentors from afar for me, like Jay Kinder was kind of a mentor. I, I would I, I don't know why I just resonated with Jay because I would see him on videos and I would I, I my I was like, if Jay can do it, I can do it. You know what I mean? If Jay can, and I, he's so a real like, yeah, when you saw her at that conference, it was like, if she can do it, I can do it, right? So there it was something that kind of a little fire under you that, you know, when she, when you heard Jeff Glover and her speak, it kind of, I don't know, something changed in you, right? To, to say, I if they can do it, I can do this. They can do it. Well, I mean, people were doing it. And, and that's the thing. I've always been a believer where if it's been done, why not me? Why not me? Yeah. You know, I, mean, Love it. I mean, look at the president of the United States. <laughs> He can do it. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, you just you look at people in business, and they all started somewhere. You know, we all put our pants on one leg at a time. Um, you know, are there people that are smarter than me that are mathematicians? Yep, I'm not a mathematician. Are there people that are biochemists? Yep, they're just better at their craft. Um, for me, I enjoyed sales, and my family, you know, enjoyed sales. So it was just natural for me to to go into real estate. When I saw them doing it at a high level, I thought, well, why not us? You know, why can't we do this? And so all I needed was the coach and the direction and the training. And I'm not a person that goes, well, that's stupid. That's never going to work. I go, all those people are doing it and they're all making millions. I'm doing it. I don't question things. Like if I see success, I don't need to see another success. I don't need to see 500 success stories. I just need to see a few. And then I go, well, that works. I can do that. Um, so that was R&D, rip off and duplicate. That's Wait, what so we do at a high level. I said R and D, rip off and duplicate. That's what we do at a high level. Yeah, I'm not smart enough to recreate it. I just know that I'm smart enough to copy it because it works, yeah. you know. And yeah. so that's really um, what the training and Mike Ferry brought to me. So um, I didn't know Michelle really a couple years into into Mike Ferry. I met her at one of the events, and I kind of said, "Hey, you inspired me um, because of you know just who you are." I thought if you could do it, I could do it, and we became friends from there. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and really what's fun is Mike is a great mentor, but I really learned so much from the agents that I masterminded with and to see what they did with the scripts, you know, we would be role playing and, and a price reduction script and I would go, Oh my God, that is genius. And I'd write it down. And, and Aaron Novello is one of the masters. I don't know if you know Aaron, but, um, he's one of the masters of Mike, Mike Ferry scripts. And so I role played with him and I learned so much because he had been with the company for so much longer. So it's fun to learn off other agents. And, and that's kind of how I was able to grow my business and grow the confidence that it takes to be in front of people. And so now that's what I'm teaching my agents is those scripts and that confidence. Um, and, and so they can go out and, and be, you know, great agents. I love it. I love it. So t tell me this, because the, the when we're on the topic of ISAs, right, you've 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 got it kind of dialed in at this point and we never totally have it dialed in. But you've 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 found somebody that's working for you. How did you find this gentleman? Uh, he actually reached out to me. So he reached out to me through um, Facebook and he said, hey, you have a big team. Um, I've been an ISA before. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to interview me, great. And so we role played and and that was it. And I thought he's really good. So we tweaked some things and, and just kept learning and, and growing together. And so now he's been with us for, I want to say, eight months, nine months. OK, that's good. And so he's calling expires and for sale by owners. Any other lead categories for you? Uh, well, there's lots of lead categories. So expires for sale by owners. I mean, we have we use real geeks and we do pay per click and we do Facebook. I mean, we do a little bit of Zillow leads. Um, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, we do just listed, just sold. We call past clients. Um, we try to diversify our lead flow and our calls each day. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I think that the biggest opportunities in listings for me, because I'm a driver, so I want easy results. And so I'm going to call a failed listing because they've already listed. They have to sell. Um, yes, they're going to be grumpy. And yes, they're going to be bummed out. But they're not bummed out at me. They're bummed out at their experience. And so what my coach told me is, if you don't go help them and they end up listing with a mediocre agent, that's your fault. Like yeah. you, it's your duty to call these people and to, to get in front of them and to, to show them how it should look and, yeah. and to get them out of their asset. That is your job. 
And I so you have that mindset. mindset shift, you know, and it's, and it's, that it's your duty to call. If you don't call, you're doing them a disservice, right? Service. It's your job, you know, and if you have that belief as an agent that you're going to go in there and help these people get what they want, then you get what you want. And that's the reward. And so you yeah. can't do the money. You can't be, you can't have commission breath. You just got to go out there and say, I'm going to help people at a high level and the money comes. And so that's, what's exciting about real estate. So what do you, what, what is a typical day for your ISA look like? Um, he is basically calling from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and he's just calling. I mean, he literally is making probably, I mean, he talks to, I bet, live answers, 20 yeah. people, 25 people. I mean, that's it. So of the 25, he'll make three to four appointments. We'll probably cancel half of them. Um, and so we get two good appointments out of them a day. And then we'll list five probably four to five listings a week based on his, um, his effort, which is awesome. That's money. That's money. That, that is awesome, man. And so are, do you have him like, are you, is he using like Mojo or is he using some sort of a dialer? Yeah, he uses a dialer. He uses Mojo. We have Mojo and Vulcan. Uh, we have both. So we like to flip flop. Okay. Um, so we've used Red X before too, which is good. I mean, they're all good. You just got to use them. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and then you have to call at different times a day. So I always tell my, my agents, you know, in the morning, you're not going to get everybody. You're going to get older people who are retired. Um, you're going to get people that work from home. Um, at 12 o'clock is a great time to call because you're going to get people that are leaving work for lunch. So if you have cell phone numbers, between 12 and 1 is a great time. And then at 5 o'clock, between 5 and 6 is a great time because people are just leaving work and they're in their car, so you have a captive audience. That's mm -hmm. a great time to call people. And then I feel like when people get home at 6, between 6 and 7.30, they're doing dinner time, you know, playing with the kids. They're winding down at about 7.30. So 7.30 to 8.30 is a great time to call during the week. And then Saturdays. Saturdays between, I would say, 9.30 and 11.30 is a great time. And then Sundays again between 6 and 7. Yep. So you want to make your calls when people are going to be home. And, yep. and that's really – or attentive. So my man Paul – Paul McMahon, he says, when you say you will cancel them, what exactly do you mean? I know what you mean. Do you want to explain that to Paul? Um, you mean the appointments that come in? Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you make five appointments, you have to, when you pre-qualify your, your listings, when you call a seller and you say, hey, Mr. Seller, Ben made an appointment. I'm going to meet with you. It sounds like tomorrow at 2.30 um, is now a good time for a quick chat. And they say, sure. And you say, well, you know, hey, uh, Mr. Seller, if, if what I say makes sense when I see you tomorrow at five um, and you feel comfortable and confident in my ability to sell your home, are you planning to list your home with me tomorrow at five? And he says, well, no. And then I go, well, great. May, may I ask why? And he says, well, because I already signed a listing with, you know, uh, ABC Real Estate and I'm going to put it online. You know, it, it's a just it's not a valid appointment. Yeah. You know, he's already signed a listing. Um, so, so the foundation, what you're saying is you're essentially, Paul, she's qualifying that the uh, the trip is worth her time. Correct. Correct. I don't want to go out there and find out that, you know, there there's just some condition that they can't get over. They've got to be motivated. They got to be ready. They got to be willing and able. So, yeah. yeah. OK. And then so um, I mean, that's that's just that's awesome. So you. You've got them calling different lead categories. I always tell, um, like I, I met with my agent, um, one of my agents today, one on one, and I'm I'm telling them, you know, you're we're, and I actually did a, I did a Facebook live on this like last week, because you know I think what you have to help people understand is that you always want to call some sort of an optimized list, and and what I mean by that is, like you could give an agent a phone book and you could say, hey, go look for buyers and sellers in this phone book, right, and you know the chances of them getting an appointment out of the phone book are not really good as it compares to, you know, maybe calling for sell by owners or expires, right? What those, what those essentially are, they're optimized list, which give you a better chance for, uh, for success. And, sure. and so, you know, you, you make sure like what lead categories you call, they absolutely count. Absolutely. And, there are people that have success doing neighborhood prospecting. Uh, there, we've got a guy in our office that does it. Um, but, you know, I can tell you that's a tough road to hoe, man. Um, if you're just calling, you know, neighborhood prospecting and that's all you ever do, there's not a lot of competition, but the no. conversion rates are much lower. They're much lower. I mean, you know, you want to start with expireds each morning. I mean, they're fresh, they're new, they just came off the market. Um, a ton of agents are going to be calling. 
Um, and then you want to go to your for sale by owners. And then we always go to lead follow up. So people that you, you know, I have a system where we follow up. So if you talk to somebody two weeks ago, you know, you want to follow up with those people. And then you want to maybe do, you know, buy or lead follow up or, you know, whatever, just listed, just sold. Um, and then you check your email and then you go to lunch. And then if you don't have appointments all day and you're a newer agent or you, you're an agent that's been doing it for 10 years, if you have no appointments, get back on the phones. You know, yeah. you got to start every day at zero. I always start with the mindset. I have no business today until I get an appointment. And with that mindset, you're constantly in hunting mode. I need a new seller. I need a new buyer. And I need to do something that grows my business today. So even if it's a price reduction, that grows your business. Um, so you better get a price reduction. You better get a new listing. You better, you know, get a new appointment. You better do something that's going to grow the business or you're out of business that day. Sure. And Paul says, thank you so much, Tina. Um, this is so beneficial. I have really been struggling with the idea of coaching. Um, I know you are a, a Mike Ferry client. Um, any, any plugs for Mike Ferry? By the way, this is, we're, we're not being promoted by Mike Ferry. Um, uh, certainly we, we appreciate what Mike Ferry does for the industry, but in no way are, are we, um, well, I guess in a sense we are promoting Mike Ferry because you've done, he's done a really good job for you, but he's not promoting the show. So any, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I mean, and, and I'm actually not coaching, uh, coached by Mike Ferry um, organization anymore. I, I got to a point where um, it wasn't, I wasn't getting what I needed out of it because I think Mike Ferry is great to grow someone's business, to give them the, the base foundation and to grow that for you know, five, 10, even 15 years. There's people that are with them for 20. For me, I was looking for something else. I actually actually ended up going to a MAPS coach um, who was awesome. I mean, KW is a great company. Um, their MAPS coach, what's funny is when I went to KW, all of the scripts are Mike Ferry scripts. And so a lot of the coaches from Mike Ferry's organizations, um, you know, are, are KW coaches. So everyone kind of commingles everything. But um, so I, uh, had a great coach in maps, but then when I left KW, obviously they can't coach me anymore. Um, so I'm coach less now, but yeah. the neat thing is I'm okay with that because of, uh, being with the XP, you know, they call us an like icon agent. Um, now I can give back and I'm going to be one of the trainers, um, at EXP, which is so cool. So, um, I'll get to give back in a different capacity. And it's funny when I'm teaching my agents, I'm almost learning it all over again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really been kind of fun. That's awesome, man. Yeah. They say, uh, you know, uh, the re repetition is the mother of all learning and there's no yeah. repetition like teaching, right? That's what, that's exactly what it is. And Paul, it's Mike Ferry, not Tom Ferry, Mike. Um, it's Mike, Mike. Yeah. Don't get confused. Yeah. So, um, so tell me this, um, and I don't know what you're willing to share. Uh, how do you, what is the best way to compensate an ISA? Well, I think all ISAs are a little bit different. So we have changed the plan uh, tremendously. I mean, you know, you used to be um, 2,500 a month for the full salaried ISAs. They get 10% when they bring in an expired or FISBO listing. Uh, they get 250 bucks, I think it was for buyer. Uh, like if they did buyer leads that came in and they booked buyer appointments for our, our buyers. Um, same thing, you know, it depends on the ISA and what they're looking for. So our guy is hourly um, plus bonus um, okay. and that's what, what he gets. So um, it really just depends on how good they are. Uh, but most of the time it's it's 10 percent and then 5 percent, 5 percent for uh, buyer lead appointments and then 10 percent for listings. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And one thing that I would add, because um, obviously I've made my mistakes with ISAs um, is, that, you know, be when it comes to compensation, be very careful there. Um, we made the mistake of uh, sending Zillow leads to our ISA. Um, and the, the, I, I can tell you with the way our pay structure was set up, it was not profitable because number one, um, Zillow leads are already extremely expensive. Um, Crazy. Yep. Number two is you, you, you've got to split with your agent and number right. three, you've got to split with your ISA and there right. ain't left over after that. No. So yeah, be very cautious of that. And the only reason I can tell you that is because I made the mistake. So hopefully that doesn't that call the those, those are, those go right to the agents and around Robin and uh, you know, and yeah, so totally get it. Awesome. Totally. Yeah. Well, listen, Tina, this has been so good. I, I could probably talk to you for another hour, but uh, definitely not going to take your time. I, I appreciate you, um, you know, spending 
the afternoon with me and, and dropping some serious knowledge on, on your career development and, and your ISA team. Um, and certainly look forward to talking with you again in the future. Awesome. Thank you. It's It's been awesome and anytime. So thanks for what you do. Your podcast. I watch them all. Absolutely. Hey, how would you um, how would you want people if people have questions about, you know, building an ISA team or personal development or maybe they're looking at the opportunity at EXP? How would you prefer they reach out to you? Uh, well, they can uh, they can email me just Tina at call team dot com, C-A-U-L team dot com. Um, or they can go to the call group site. Um, just go to www.callgroup.com and click connect and ask for me and, and you'll get me. So. Love it. Love it. So I, I assume then I will see you in Orlando in June. I, I will be there with bells on. I'm excited. All right. I look forward to it. Thank you so Thanks. much. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.